it's TLDR time. I'm Asa from GameOnDaily.com and this is your weekly TLDR roundup of all the gaming news this week. This week's a bit of a Gamescom special by default because that's where most of the news has been coming from. Gamescom typically takes place every August in Germany and it's the biggest gaming convention in Europe. Sadly it's a digital only event this year but it's given us plenty to talk about. Let's get into it. Microsoft held their Xbox Showcase a day ahead of the Gamescom event. They promised a show focused on games and content that we'll be seeing this year, and they stayed true to that, so it was a fairly low-key event in terms of game announcements. The Master Chief was notably absent, and there weren't really any explosive announcements to, to get the bones shaking. In my opinion, the most noteworthy reveal wasn't actually a game at all, but rather a service. Microsoft showed off their cloud streaming capability through Xbox consoles, Later this year, you'll start seeing the option to play now on supported titles in Game Pass, alongside the option to install them. Play Now streams the game from the cloud, offering near instant access without the need to download and install the game. The concept is not revolutionary, so PlayStation Now already does this, but the fact that the feature will allow Xbox Series games to be available on the Xbox One generation of consoles is a bit of a game changer. It means Microsoft can develop true next-gen games that leverage all the power of the series consoles without excluding people that just don't have access to the latest hardware. That's great news for everybody. The 90-minute Xbox Showcase did of course feature games, with Dying Light 2 as a standout. The highly anticipated multi-platform game from Techland got a gameplay trailer, showing parkour across an expansive city that was absolutely packed with zombies and a sprinkling of pretty unfriendly surviving humans. The first Dying Light game did a great job of standing out from a pack of zombie games, and the sequel looks to kick everything up a notch with new traversal skills and player decisions that have a big impact on the game world. We also got another look at The Gunk, but it was a surprisingly brief showing for that one. And we saw an enthusiastic dev walkthrough of Wasteland 3 DLC Cult of the Holy Detonation. State of Decay 2 Homecoming was announced by Undead Labs, and that's perhaps a bit of a surprise, because Undead Labs did announce State of Decay 3 last year, and we've still not seen any gameplay of the new title. There was a quick fire look at a collection of indie games published by Humble that are coming to Xbox Game Pass, and we got another extended look at Forza Horizon 5. There's no surprises with this one, it still looks absolutely stunning. Gamescom proper kicked off with Opening Night Live, and this one definitely had more announcements packed into the two-hour presentation. Volition's Saints Row reboot opened the show with a cinematic trailer and brief glimpses of gameplay. The Saints Row series started as an unashamed ripoff of Grand Theft Auto, but each new iteration escalated the excess to the point that Saints Row 4 more closely resembled a crackdown game than a Grand Theft Auto. The reboot looks to bring the series back to ground level, with a new city, new cast and new story that Volition hope will be more relatable to the real gangsters. For the Xbox fans that were clamouring for Halo Infinite news, they found it here, with an official release date of the 8th of December announced alongside a cinematic trailer introducing the new Spartan program and setting up multiplayer and live service elements of the title. We also got the reveal of some limited edition hardware that went up for pre-order immediately during the show, an Elite Series 2 controller that looks exactly like the Master Chief. Uh, if he was a controller, and a spiffy limited edition Halo Infinite Series X console. That one sold out almost instantly, but you can still pick it up from scalpers with a modest 300% markup. Sony also took the opportunity to confirm a release date for their next big title, Horizon Forbidden West. The game was initially announced for 2021, but Sony previously alluded to it being delayed into next year, and that's now official. Forbidden West is slated for February the 18th for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 players can also take Aloy through her first adventure at 60 frames per second now, with a free patch for Horizon Zero Dawn that doubles the game's frame rate. 2K announced Marvel Midnight Suns, a new Marvel story featuring a cast of 13 characters from across the Marvel Universe, including Doctor Strange, Wolverine and Ghost Rider. Midnight Suns is in development at Fire Axis Games, the studio behind XCOM, and it's confirmed to be a turn-based tactics game in the same vein as the XCOM series. We're promised a gameplay reveal this September 1st, and the full game should release in March next year. 
The two hour show had plenty more besides these, with a gameplay reveal for Jurassic World Evolution 2, the colourful and quite bonkers Dokev, Riders Republic gameplay, and an in depth look at features coming to Death Stranding Director's Cut. Moving away from Gamescom, we've got a couple of releases worth talking about. Psychonauts 2 is out now, and the reviews for that have far exceeded my own expectations, with near universal acclaim, making this one a candidate for the Real Game of the Year awards. You know, the real ones that happen at the end of the year, when the games are finished and people have played them, not the, uh, not the strange ones that they doled out at Gamescom. Tim Schafer's Double Fine Studio can surely be proud of this game, with critics praising the creative level design, tight mechanics, thought-provoking character interactions and good humour. It's available now for Xbox consoles, PC and PlayStation 4, and it's included in Xbox Game Pass. Wrapping things up is another pretty strong release with No More Heroes 3. The cult series has been dormant for 11 years, but this new entry brings the signature quirkiness and excess of violence to the Nintendo Switch. It's received positive reviews from Hey Poor Player and COG Connected. Console creatures feel the title is stuck in the past in all the wrong ways and will only appeal to existing fans of the series. But really that's exactly who this title is made for and if you count yourself among those fans, it sounds like it's going to be a good game for you. That's it for this week. As always, you can check out GameOnDaily.com to keep on top of all of the news. And if you want to hear more in-depth, opinionated discussions on things like this, then you can catch us on Go Live every Saturday right here on this channel. Or talk to me when I'm live on Twitch at Pacer underscore GameOnDaily. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like button on your way out and enjoy your gaming. Purple, purple, purple.